Like the pine trees lining the winding road I got a name I got a name Like the singing bird Moving me down the highway Rolling me down the highway Moving ahead so life won't pass me by Like the north wind whistling down the sky I'm moving ahead so life won't pass me by Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. About a month ago I did a review and giveaway of the Ferris Wheel Press Carousel Fountain Pen. I was so impressed by the Toronto, Canada based company that I signed on to their YouTube channel and started following them on Facebook and Instagram. They made an announcement on Instagram that they were doing a live stream new product announcement and I joined in to watch. Christopher, the product graphic designer, and Rebecca, the marketing coordinator for Ferris Wheel Press, hosted the launch and they announced a new limited edition ink called Roaring Patina Black and a new color for their The Brush fountain pen called Echoes of Eaton. I had already ordered a bottle of the Roaring Patina Black and contacted Rebecca about getting one of The Brush fountain pens for review. They sent me this The Brush fountain pen in creme glacé white for review, and I waited until my bottle of Roaring Patina Black arrived to review the pen. I did a shorty video comparing the Roaring Patina Black to J. Urban's Stormy Gray and Shogun inks, which you can watch by clicking up here. In the meantime, let's take a look at this white pen and black ink right now. And here's the package, and let's open it up. Yeah. And here's the box, and it's called Creme Glacé. My French is awful, but it's white and gold, and it's the brush fountain pen, Le Stido Plume Pinceau. Ferris Wheel Press, their packaging is always excellent. And again, it's designed and assembled in Toronto, Canada. Ferris Wheel Press Toronto. And we have 14 karat gold plated nib. Let's open it up. And slides out and it comes in a really nice velveteen pouch. It says, write history. And the pen is just laying in there. Let's take that out, and it says on the back, Ferris Wheel Press, fall in love with writing again. And we can see the pen sticking out here. And it is a metal pen with a white enamel finish, and what looks like a brass, well, looks like a lug nut, if you ask me. That unscrew, yes, it unscrews. And there's the brass section that has some engraving on it with an M in the middle for a medium engraving pattern on that brass section which which mimics their packaging style unscrew the section and we have what looks like looks like a stand I'll have to check the measurements on that it doesn't look like a standard international at all we'll have to see what cartridges that might take and it says rat tat tat all brass fittings brass pen no clip and it won't roll on your desk because of that really interesting brass cap band and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen now channel members got to see the unboxing of the brush pen a couple of weeks ago but I didn't have the Roaring Patina Black ink at that time. So I want to show you the excellent packaging of the ink and the unique styling and designs on the bottle. Here's the package. It has some excellent gold foil stamped uh, lines as well as some beautiful watercolor-like friezes 
uh, columns and decoration on the package. But the bottle itself is really intriguing. Here is a regular bottle of Ferris Wheel Press ink. You see the circular paper label on one side and the gold painted Ferris Wheel Press logo on the other side with the Fairgrounds line drawing on the bottom. So the limited edition ink has a different design. The gold line painting here on the back has a design that mirrors the design on the box, as well as some text on the inside circle that says, write your stunning chapter in the new Roaring Twenties with 2022 and the Ferris Wheel Press logo in the center. And the paper label has a different kind of design on it as well, Roaring Patina Black patine noir 38 milliliters both 38 milliliter bottles share the same glass shape and hexagon cap i understand the bottle was part of a kickstarter design contest and this design won sometimes common sense must give way to democracy i guess but this bottle design isn't great as anyone who's tried to fill a pen from one of these ink time bombs can attest uh, they tend to be very very tippy and it's just an accident waiting to happen. But Inquiring Minds has come to the rescue yet again. First, we brought you the Robert Oster Ink Buddy Bottle Stabilizer for the very tippy Robert Oster plastic bottles. And now we have a stabilizer for the Ferris Wheel Press 38 milliliter bottles. You slip it in and it stabilizes the ink so you're not tipping the bottle all over the place while you're trying to fill your pen. And there's another thing I don't like so much about the 38 milliliter bottle is that the, the neck size on the bottle is very narrow and it's not wide enough to allow me to fill my uh, larger piston fillers. But enough about the bottle, let's look at the pen. This is the Ferris Wheel Press The Brush Fountain Pen. It is designed in Canada, but manufactured in Shanghai, China. Overall, it has a shape designed for the pen's namesake, the artist paintbrush. But an artist paintbrush isn't designed for a typical pen grip for writing. It's designed to be held in a variety of ways, uh, almost always further back away from the brush and the ferrule. And the arm is used rather than the wrist and fingers, as in writing. There are underhanded brush grips, and even in sumi painting grips, uh, the grip is further back on the handle. So the paintbrush inspiration for the design of the fountain pen is certainly artistic, deriving from the barrel's shape from the handle of the brush and the section from the ferrule of the paintbrush. But practically, although there are always exceptions to every rule, no artist holds a paintbrush by the ferrule. So overall, the pen is very sleek with a long tapering barrel and a rounded cap and has a large hexagonal brass nut as a cap band, which acts as a roll stop. And it does that very well indeed. And that hexagonal cap is again a design echo to the hexagonal cap on the ink bottle. The pen isn't as heavy as I expected for a metal pen. The cap and the barrel are enamel painted copper and the section section threads and cap band are polished brass. From the top we see the rounded finial and the cap tapers up and then is straight to the aforementioned hexagonal brass cap band. The hexagonal band here is also part of the company's design motif as the shape is repeated on all of the bottles of 38 milliliter and 85 milliliter bottles. There is a step down from the cap band to the barrel, but notice how the arc of the line of the pen continues uninterrupted from the cap to the barrel. Visually, it looks like the brass nut is sitting on the outside of a continuous shape. That's a very clever design decision. The barrel is straight until here, where it tapers away to a small round end finial. The cap unscrews with one two and a half turns to reveal a long tapering brass section and number five size 14 karat gold plated steel medium nib. And the section has some deeply engraved patterns. These patterns are part of Ferris Wheel Press's imagery, which is based on early 20th century printing press equipment. Here I'll quote Ferris Wheel Press from their website. 
The spirited etchings on the grip are inspired by the mechanical components of our vintage printmaking studio equipment, including the flywheel of a 1912 pearl letter press and a fully functional Underwood typewriter. The original modern method of typesetting. The fanning geometric lines are analogous to the type of hammers of the typewriter. At the bottom of the section, these brass cap threads and this small step to the barrel are rather sharp. Although the engravings on the section keep my grip from slipping, I found after long writing sessions with this pen that those brass threads and the step to the barrel end up being uncomfortable and actually leave some marks on my fingers. The best grip I found on this pen was holding it back on the barrel as the grip section, in addition to being slightly sharp, is also much too narrow, running from 9mm at the widest part to 8mm at the thin end. But being a paintbrush style, this didn't bother me. But if you have larger hands than me, and my hands are slightly smaller than medium sized, this pen might not be in your wheelhouse. Let's take a closer look at this nib. This one is plated in 14 karat gold. The nib has a Ferris wheel press and a Canadian maple leaf instead of a breather hole, and the Roman numerals five and six, which represent the area codes for the greater Toronto area of 905 and 416. And the writing on the nib is upside down from normal, which is another cool idiosyncrasy of the company. At least it's consistent, as you can see where the end of the brass section is engraved with 14 karat gold plated, as well as the indication of the nib size engraved right here with an M in the middle of that typewriter design. Of course, if you engrave the nib size on the section, one can assume the nib is not removable, and your assumption would be correct. Gluing the nib and feed into the section also permanently aligns the engravings on the section with the engravings on the nib. Sometimes sacrificing practicality for design aesthetics is a good thing, and sometimes it's not. The section unscrews to reveal an included standard international converter, which is good quality and has some more of the company's idiosyncratic imagery in the rat-tat-tat repeated on the metal collar of the converter. This is a reference to the early 20th century sounds of the typewriter and the printing press. The inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner that should help seal the nib from drying out. The cap posts deeply and securely and doesn't back weight the pen. It actually gives it some nice balance, but the company recommends against posting the pen as those sharp brass threads of the cap will mar the enamel on the barrel. But unposted, the pen is still plenty long enough to write with. This pen is priced at $185 Canadian, and the plain steel version is $165 Canadian. It's available with the plain steel nib in 12 colors, and the limited edition Echoes of Eaton makes 13, and with the gold-plated steel nib in 6 colors. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Ferris Wheel Press The Brush Pen with a Pilot Metropolitan, a Majon TI-200 Titanium, a Wingsung 601 Flighter, and a Lamy Palladium Colored Studio. Now let's look at them posted. Well, since you're not supposed to post the brush pen, I decided to not post the rest of them and show them all open and unposted. Even though I find the Ferris Wheel Press brush pens grip section narrow and uncomfortable at least i can find a way to write with it comfortably by adjusting my grip backwards it's nowhere near as uncomfortable as the grip section of the pilot metropolitan i just can't bear that thin section and the huge uncomfortable bump step on the metro sorry metro lovers but i just can't share the love the metro and the brush nibs and grip sections are remarkably similar in size though now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine and 90 GSM paper. And this is the Ferris wheel. press 
cotton brush and it has a medium steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet at this point, but I had to push it a little bit to get it to be a little bit wetter. It was very dry. The nib is very stiff and was a bit scratchy in the reverse direction out of the box. Uh, so just about 30 seconds with uh, some 12,000 grit micro mesh uh, cleaned up that little bit of scratchiness. It still has a lot of feedback. And it's tending to skip on me a little bit as well. The nib wasn't misaligned at all, but it had just a slight uh, scratch to it. And the ink today is Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patina Black. Here is an ink swatch that I did with the Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patina Black on Tomoe River uh, paper with a glass dip pen. And you can, you should be able to see that it's got quite a red sheen with a gold shimmer and it shades to blue black. Very, very interesting ink. I'm seeing a tiny bit of that gold uh, shimmer and certainly some of the red sheen on this ink out of this nib. And the line this nib makes is 0.3 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western XXF and a Japanese extra fine. 0.3 millimeters is not even close to being a medium nib in either East or West. The fine nib version of this must be a needle. As to line variation, this you can push a little bit out of it but the nib is very very stiff indeed and for our quote and for reverse writing And actually it works very nicely, but it's, it's drying up pretty quickly. And some quick writing. You might be able to tell that it ends up being very wet when it flows, but it tends to as you can see, skip when you move the nib fast. So I don't think it's the feed that is the problem here. I think it is the very, very tight slit uh, in that nib. You have a toy body. Yes. I see that from your toy pants. Yes, you are toy like a tiger. So this nib might take some opening up with a shim to allow it to flow better. And just to note, this is a 14 karat gold plated steel nib. It's not gold, it's steel. I love gold! You're not going to expect much flex from it or much softness from it because it is steel even though it's gold plated. And if you're going to shim a nib with a brass shim maybe uh, to open up those tines to uh, get it to flow better. If you're going to use a shim on a gold 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold nib, I would refrain from doing that because brass and steel are much harder than gold. Oh, uh, I believe this is yours. So I would leave that kind of thing to a nibmeister. 
So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first, let's look at the overall aesthetic of this pen, which I like a lot. The glossy enamel on copper with brass fittings and the brass section with the engravings are very attractive and very unique. The sleek look of this pen and its delicate slender feel in the hand is very nice indeed. I like the packaging and the faux velvet sleeve that comes with the pen. All of this speaks to the quality and attention to detail of Ferris Wheel Press. This is just a very unique fountain pen. I don't think I've seen anything that even comes close to the unique design of this pen, especially with the unique engravings on the section and the nib. But where it matters most, how it feels in the hand while writing and the experience of the nib on the page laying down a line of ink, I find the pen lacking for me. The nib does not produce a line even close to a medium, either east or west, even though M is engraved on this section. Plus the nib is so stiff, I find myself gripping it harder, which also makes it more uncomfortable because the, uh, the sharp edges of those cap threads and that little step uh, dig into my fingers. If the nib was opened up some to allow some more ink flow, it might feel better on the page. Doing the Jack Hernandez pen drag on this page shows that it's not producing much ink at all. I have to push down on it to get the ink to flow. And at roughly $147 US, it is at the high end of what you'd expect from a Chinese made steel nibbed pen. But Ferris Wheel Press has shown me that they have design skills galore. This brush pen and the carousel are the only two fountain pens they have. I'm very impressed with the design of both pens. There's a tremendous amount of thought around the pen's design. The company's packaging is second to none. So their design team's creativity is off the charts. Just look at this three ink sample pack called a charger. The little glass ink bottles have plus and minus icons on them that make them look like AA batteries. How cool is that? And their huge selection of inks is really intriguing. Where I'd like to see some improvement is in the fountain pen nibs themselves. I know that Ferris Wheel Press has ball points and roller balls as well, but fountain pen nibs are a whole different ball game and require a little bit more attention for the writing experience to live up to the overall design of the pen. And especially if you're going to make the nib a permanent part of the pen. Not being able to swap out a Chinese nib because it's a dud is a serious drawback because getting a dud out of a batch of Chinese steel nibs is something that happens a lot. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Ferris Wheel Press for providing this fountain pen for review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now, I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.